Hello and welcome to this video presentation on the 2023-24 round of the HRCI HRB joint funding scheme. So what is the HRCI HRB joint funding scheme? It brings together members of HRCI and the HRB to fund patient focused research. It provides co-funding of research projects of key relevance to member charities. HRB provides dedicated funding and primary grant management responsibility and HRCI is the first point of contact for the scheme and manages charity involvement. So what makes the HRCI HRB joint funding scheme unique? It has no national or international parallels. It has a good success rate. 21.5% of projects submitted to charities were ultimately approved for funding by the HRB in 2022. It is open to almost all types of research and is particularly beneficial for rare disease research. It has strong PPI. It was the first HRB funding scheme to include patient and public involvement reviewers on the review panel and it promotes patient focused research. How is the scheme funded? The HRB provides 50% of the cost of the project and the charity provides the other 50%. However, if a charity is very small and has revenue under €150,000, the HRB provides 75% of the cost of the project and the charity 25%. The HRB makes a €1 million Euro annual contribution to projects funded under the scheme and each award is worth up to 300,000, that is combined charity and HRB funding, for projects from 12 up to 36 months. Each charity is permitted to submit up to three projects to the HRB as well as a plus one. Eligible costs under the scheme include personnel costs, excluding tenured staff, student stipends and fees, direct running costs and dissemination costs. HRB funding purse and funding criteria are subject to HRB board approval and this will happen in June of 2023. And just to note that the HRB's contribution is paid directly to the research institution. Almost all types of research are supported by the joint funding scheme. That includes patient oriented research, health services research and population health research. So it's easier to say what's not funded under the scheme. Applications which are not primarily research, for example, literature reviews, technology development, infrastructure or health services are not funded under the scheme. Studies evaluating full-scale definitive interventions to provide high-quality evidence on the efficacy, effectiveness, cost and broad impact of the intervention and standalone feasibility studies conducted in preparation for a future definitive intervention are not funded under the scheme and this includes clinical trials. Applications not considered appropriate for ethical reasons for example, from applicants receiving research grants from the tobacco industry or research creating humans for the purposes of stem cell procurement are not funded under the scheme. Applications which are solely or predominantly health service developments or implementation of an intervention without a predominant research element are not funded under the scheme. The HRB will not fund the cost of providing the service or the intervention itself, only the research element. However, funding is available for work developing a healthcare intervention where applicants can propose work to develop a healthcare intervention. Such work may include some initial testing of the intervention in order to generate proof of concept data and thus have the basis for developing a feasibility study. This would mean that applicants could then apply to the HRB or another funder to support a feasibility study as a next step. In such cases, applicants must consult with the appropriate clinical research infrastructure supports, such as clinical research facilities, to ensure that the work done will allow them to develop a feasibility study subsequent to the HRB charity funded research. So how does the scheme work? First of all, charities that are full members of HRCI open their funding calls, which are advertised on their websites and on HRCI's joint funding scheme web pages. Then charities receive the applications and manage international peer review of each proposal they receive. Charities then shortlist proposals and submit them to the HRB for joint panel review. 
The joint panel meet and recommend proposals for funding. And the HRB board approves successful proposals. Finally, contracts are issued and projects started. So how do you apply to the joint funding scheme? All applications must be made to HRCI member charities on or before their set closing dates, and this varies according to each individual charity. The next round opens late summer, early autumn of this year, 2023, and the scheme runs every two years. Open calls and links to the relevant charity web pages are hosted on our website. We also send regular updates and open calls to higher education institution research offices. So what makes you eligible for the scheme? Principal investigators must either hold a post that covers the duration of the award in a recognized research institution as an independent investigator, or be a contract researcher recognized by the research institution, or be an individual who will, will be recognized as a contract researcher by the research institution. The PI's contract must cover the duration of the award. PIs must have at least three peer-reviewed publications and at least one peer-reviewed research grant as lead applicant or co-applicant. Only one application per PI will be considered. And the PI can be based outside Ireland in specific circumstances, for example, when there is no research capacity in Ireland for a specific topic. When considering partnering with HRCI member charities, you should consider the following. You need to build partnerships with charities as early as possible. And you need to familiarise yourself with the charity's strategy and objectives. Considering patient and public involvement in the joint funding scheme. There are specific PPI questions in the application form. You're asked to describe all PPI at each stage of the research cycle. That includes identifying and prioritising the research question, design, conduct, analysis, oversight and dissemination. And for each stage, include the purpose of the involvement and how PPI has influenced or changed any planned work. This question may change in the new version of the application form. At the review panel meeting, a review of PPI and applications is included and PPI reviewers give a rating or a correction score to the scientific score given to each application. So it is important to think about PPI from the very start. When considering your own PPI approach, we have prepared case studies of excellence in PPI and applications to this scheme and you can find them at this website. Our charities are also skilled in PPI and may be able to advise and support you. HRCI has resources on the website, for example, our PPI toolkit and videos of successful past projects. And finally, your local PPI Ignite team can also help and support you. So this is the provisional timeline for this round of the joint funding scheme. Charities can open their calls at any time from July onwards in 2023, but most will be opening their calls in late summer, early autumn of 2023. Charities then organise international peer review for each of the applications they receive, and this takes place from 20th of October 2023 to the 26th of January 2024. Applicants have the right to respond to anonymised feedback from international peer reviewers, and this takes place from the 29th of January 2024 to the 9th of February 2024. The HRB then opened GEMS, their online system for submission of applications on the 28th of February 2024. And charities can submit their applications up to the deadline of the 27th of March 2024. The joint selection panel meeting takes place in the week commencing the 27th of May 2024 and successful projects from this meeting are taken to the HRB board for approval at their meeting in June 2024. Applicants are then notified of the success or failure in the scheme after this June 2024 HRB board meeting. Contracts are then issued from July 2024 onwards 
and you should note that there are different start dates for national versus foreign host institutions. National host institutions start project start date from November the 1st, 2024, whereas international host institution projects start from the 1st of January 2025. So some final tips to take away with you as you consider taking part in this latest round of the HRCI HRB joint funding scheme. The first tip then most important is to be proactive now. Look at your networks, build your relationships with charities, look at your PPI. Think about whether your research lines up with specific charity priorities. And don't continue unless you're serious about patient or public benefit. Your priorities as a researcher may be different from that of the charities. Start giving thought to PPI as early as possible and line up an experienced research design and statistics expert if this is appropriate for your research. Don't forget to keep an eye on the HRCI website and Twitter feed for updates on open calls. Finally, you can get further information on the joint funding scheme on the HRCI website and on the HRB website at www.hrci.ie or www.hrb.ie and you can always contact me Dr Sarah Delaney Research Support Coordinator with HRCI at sarah at hrci.ie and all that remains is to thank you very much for having a look at this video and looking at this presentation and you can get in touch with me if you have any questions.